Well, good evening, everybody. It's 7 o'clock on July 6, 2020, and uh, we will call our meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Gary. I'm here. Commissioner Baker. Here. Commissioner Beth Rath. Here. Commissioner Collins. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Martino. Here. Here. Commissioner Torty. Here. Uh, Commissioner uh, Collins did reach out to the city manager and I and said he would not be able to attend this evening. So we would need a uh, motion to excuse him, please. Make a motion Make to excuse Commissioner Collins for this evening's meeting. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. Uh, all in favor say aye, please. Aye. 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 And he is excused. Commissioner Miller has the... Uh, camera in focus. Uh, so if we could all mute our phones and Commissioner Miller, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Yes, Your Honor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Miller. Well done. Uh, item four, mayor comments and general announcements. Uh, just a couple. Certainly would like to uh, thank the general public for all of their patience and understanding on our um, unfortunate uh, delay of the fireworks on the 4th of July. And uh, thank you to Scott Labonte, the chief, and uh, all of the firefighters that uh, work hard to put on the fireworks. We had a fantastic display yesterday. And uh, from what I could see, there was a lot of social distancing and uh, people were doing really well. There were a lot of cars parked. I think that uh, everybody needed that type of celebration to uh, celebrate our independence and uh, well done uh, City of Sault Ste. Marie government and uh, people of the city. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to proclamations and recognitions. Tonight there are none. Uh, C, public comment. And I see we have a few guests tonight. So is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on any of the agenda items? We'd like to know your name and uh, where you live and uh, also which item you would like to uh, speak in regard to. So anybody that would like to speak on any of our agenda items? You'll have to unmute yourselves uh, because we, the new version of uh, Zoom lost the ability to unmute everybody. So anybody like to speak on any agenda items? Okay, hearing none, you certainly have an opportunity at the end of the meeting in the matters presented by the public uh, to speak as well. So thank you for attending tonight. Uh, moving on to item D is the consent agenda. Deputy City Manager Troyer. Under the consent agenda one, approval of the City Commission meeting minutes of June 15th. Item two is approval of the City Commission meeting minutes of June 17th. Item three is acceptance of the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority meeting minutes of May 12th. Item four, acceptance of the Economic Development Corporation meeting minutes of May 12th. Item five, acceptance of the Police and Fire Pension Board meeting minutes of April 15th. Item six, acceptance of the Police and Fire Pension Board meeting minutes of May 27th. Item seven, acceptance of the Sault Ste. Marie Housing Commission meeting minutes of February 26th, March 26th, April 16th, and May 21st. Item eight, acceptance of the Tax Increment Authority Unit 3 meeting minutes of May 12th. Item nine, consideration for the city manager to sign the Chippewa County Mutual Aid Agreement. And item 10 is approval of the consent agenda items as presented. Thank you, Deputy City Manager. Certainly good to see all of the committees of the City of St. Marie uh, active. Does any commissioner like any of these items removed for further consideration or like any explanations, uh, further explanations on any of the items? Uh, commissioner Miller, your hand was up. <laughs> I don't exactly know what number nine is. I'm sorry. 
So number nine is a mutual aid agreement with the fire department in Chippewa County. Uh, basically what this does, it's a standard mutual aid agreement. If we need them, we can call in the county's resources. If they need us, they can call us in as a resource. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Twardy, do you wanna make the motion? Sure, I move to approve the consent agenda. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. Uh, roll call, please. Any questions or comments, I guess, first? We went through that drill, no? Nope. Roll call, please. Mayor Gary? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bospis Rath? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Talentino? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Motion passed, thank you very much. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, E, special orders of business. Uh, we have none this evening, so we'll move on to F, uh, communications, uh, city manager Chapman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the first uh, communication request from uh, yourself and Commissioner Baker regarding the parks and recreation facilities and bathrooms. I don't know if you guys want to start, kind of give the intent or how you want to handle that. Uh, thank you, city manager. Sorry, while well, I'm trying to toggle here. <clears throat> Only have a single screen tonight, so. Uh, so uh, I think uh, this item, uh, both Commissioner Baker and I had asked to uh, have this placed on the city commission agenda. And uh, I had asked the city manager to uh, kind of do a review of of uh, what he thought uh, the recreational facilities uh, will look like in the in the future, and I think <coughs> Commissioner Baker uh, had had wanted it as uh, an individual item. So, Commissioner Baker, if you'd like to go first, or would you like uh, City Manager to? Um. Yeah, I'd like to go if that's okay. Sure. Uh, yep. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Um. As I'm sure all of you have gotten emails and phone calls in the last few weeks regarding um, the rest restrooms and all the um, public parks uh, and recreation facilities and how they're not open. It is becoming a major issue. We have people using the bathroom in public, in our public places. We're talking young kids, we're talking adults. I know that the budget is tight. I understand the situation that we're in, but I also believe that we could revisit some of the things on the budget, specifically, specifically the three things that I would like to wanted to hit: the concession for thirty-five thousand, the community services board for twenty, the legends advertising for eight. That would free up a sub substantial amount of money that could help facilitate the cleaning and the opening of the bathrooms. And with, you know, we don't have to have people up at the ball fields at eight o'clock in the morning. We just need them there when there's people there. And or Sherman Park, again, in the afternoon, there's something has to be done. We cannot continue to allow this to happen, especially during a pandemic. It is, this is, we have taxpayer money of, especially uh, people, I'm, and I'm just using Malcolm as an example because I'm familiar with that a lot, um, but you've got people paying user fees and to rent the ball field for tournaments, yet no bathroom facilities. And then on top of that, then they have to go and rent a porta potty. And on top of that, they do, I would say safely, 75 to 80% of the maintenance up at the ball fields. So there's a major issue here, and I think that there is room in the budget to cut. I think we need to respect the union as we have in the past. And unfortunately, we have to make cuts uh, and make those hard decisions. And you know, $20,000 for the community services board, I'm pretty sure those user groups would really prefer a bathroom to use versus seeing what I saw up at the ball fields and adults, parents blocking each other, holding towels up. It's, it's just getting, it's getting out of hand and frankly, quite embarrassing. 
and for taxpayers for what we pay what we pay here in our community we should definitely try to resolve the uh, solution as quickly as possible before summer's gone thank you thank you uh, commissioner baker uh city manager did you want to uh kind of outline the the process and the reasons that uh we aren't open yet so the biggest thing is good staffing and time um with the increased covid uh guidelines to maintain those facilities there's frequent washes that have to be done frequent cleanings of touch points and it's it's just too much for the staff we're operating in four or five people less than we had last summer the we may the biggest thing is we want to open them up but we're looking for capacity um, the last month it's been a rainy month there's been grass growing like crazy uh, we maintain 150 plus acres of grass that we have to continue to mow we're open you know to open them up but there's got to be an understanding that there will be certain cuts in other areas or other areas not maintained i mean it's just it's a capacity thing i mean if there's some if there's some willingness to allow a little bit of grass to grow in certain areas then we can find the time to do it but uh just to run through kind of what our to-do list on a weekly basis we've got 150 acres of green space we have to mow that's parks the facilities right away along the spur along the guardrails throughout the city. There's eight bathroom facilities total. There's a fist station. Um, we're watering the plants downtown on a daily basis. That takes about three hours. Um, that includes some downtown garbage removal. That's a daily task that we do. We've got the parking garage maintenance and we're operating one day a week. So, I mean, if there's, if there's some areas that we can get kind of a, a pass on, and we can let it get a little unruly for the time being, then by all means, we'll open up the bathrooms. And if the issue is truly about user fees, then by all means, we can refund those user fees. Um, but it's it just, it's the time is tough. One, one thing we did have come back to us, um, as the commission is aware, we're pretty dependent on the jail crew coming out with about five to six guys and they do a lot of these smaller, lower level tasks of weed whipping around trees, posts, all sorts of different stuff. And while they're, I say they're lower level tasks, they're important, but they've been on kind of a lockdown, excuse the, the wordage, but they've been not accessible um, since the start of COVID. We just got that crew back on June 24th. So, I mean, it, it, five to six guys that's huge for us so we do have some more people coming back onto our, our our working roster but you know we can make them work we just need a little bit of leeway or if there is a motion to you know as commissioner baker said if there's a motion to cut the funding and redirect to the parks then we can facilitate that by all means so brian excuse me sorry Thanks, Commissioner Baker. I just uh, wanted to ask one question. Um, are there enhanced uh, facility uh, guidelines from the state of Michigan for keeping restrooms open right now? Is it a everyday cleaning, sanitizing or no? It's a couple times a day. It's a thorough cleaning a couple times a day, but then there's language that says the it's vague in the touch points. It says touch points will be cleaned frequently. Now, what's the definition of frequently for a touch point? No, I don't know. But that, that's kind of the guidelines for the bathroom facilities right now. And it's not necessarily the state of Michigan. It's you know, the state of Michigan, it's the CDC, all those other areas. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Baker, it's your item if you want to make some comments. So, Brian, with those cuts, would that $60,000 help facilitate hiring somebody specifically for bathroom cleaning for the remainder of the summer with knowing that the bathrooms don't need to be unlocked up at the ball fields at 8 a.m.? They can be unlocked at which point people start 
coming there according to the schedule from Parks and Rec and what they have there. Would that $60,000 help pay for a specific employee designated for cleaning of public bathrooms in the Parks and Rec facilities? It's probably, well, I, I mean, they, the, the easy answer is yes. The, it would probably, it's probably too much. You probably don't need that much. If there was, like you said, if, if you were to, with a motion to possibly re-divert the CS or the, yeah, the CSB community services funding, if that's palatable to commission, then that money alone would probably help out, you know, obviously significantly. Because it's, it's, it's workforce. So, I mean, it's the part-timers that we're not having right now that we can send out at different times to help clean up different areas. So, you know, 60 is probably too much, um, but the... Um, would 20 be enough? Could be. And I, I just don't wanna make a promise that I can't quite deliver on right now. Um, I mean, 20 would help. Obviously, I um, I would like to make a motion then to uh, move the funds from the community services board for twenty thousand, as well as the eight thousand from the Legends Advertising, as well as the thirty five thousand from the Polar, to free up money for Parks and Rec and uh, whatever left over. If you don't need the sixty, use it for sanitizer stands for up at the ball fields or at our parks and rec uh, in right before they walk into the bathroom as well. But we need to start addressing this. So I'd like to make that motion. Okay, there's a motion on the table. Um, I guess, we'll, is there support for that motion at this time? Okay, um, is there a mo can I make a motion? Can I make a motion to just do the 20 grand from the community services board then? Good. Yeah, you can make a motion if that was your yeah, question. I'd, yeah, yeah, I'd like to make a I'd like to make a motion to withdraw the 20 grand from the community services board to divert it to the bathrooms for parks and rec for the summer. Okay, there's there is a motion on the table. Is any uh, buddy in support? Okay, uh, being no support, let's go around the table and have a discussion uh, about this. So, Commissioner Baker, you've uh, spoken. Commissioner Bospis Rath, discussion on this topic? Yeah, I, I just, I agree with Abby about, I think there needs to be something done. I just, I don't know what that something is, and I don't know about pulling the 20000 from something that really helps our youth in different areas, that kind of concerns me. Um, I don't mind having it out there to say, okay, we realize these have to be open, but let's kind of take a big look at the picture and see kind of what the maintenance is gonna be daily. And maybe, maybe out of 150 acres of grass, maybe we look at what, what areas of acres are most important, what are not, just little things maybe here and there to maybe, you know, on the, on the tournament days, on the softball days, on the practice days, um, like up at the ball field I'm talking about. Um, maybe on the weekends we have, you know, the, the parks and rec restrooms open. Just different things. I don't know if I want to jump right to pulling from one funding source yet, but I, I agree that, you know, that it is a big issue. I just don't know if that's, where I want to pull it from, or if I want to just kind of have Brian and everybody look at it a little bit more before we jump that gun. I don't know. That's just my thought. Okay. Good thoughts. Uh, Commissioner Collins is absent. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Commissioner Baker, and the bathrooms have to get open. Pulling, pulling funding from these other entities right now, I mean, this is, it just happened tonight, so I haven't had a chance to think about it. Um, we do need to get the bathrooms open, but I think if we if we give Mr. Chapman and uh, city administration a little bit of time to think about it, maybe they can maybe we can find some money that that's not so. This is kind of glaring. Twenty thousand from here from youth, 
8,000 in here. It's just a little glaring. Um, I'd like to see us think about it for a little bit. Maybe it's something we could address at our next meeting. And I know the summer's going on. Our next meeting will be the 20th of July. I understand that, but maybe it's something that we could uh, see if Brian and city administration could find some money other than, other than those sources. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Talentino. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I think we need to definitely take a look at this. This definitely is an issue. I mean, I think we need to open up one restroom possibly at one of the boat launches. We need to get one up at Sherman Park. We need to get one up at the ball field. Uh, but I'd like to hear from administration as far as, you know, what it's going to be. I mean, instead of just saying, let's just, it's going to be roughly this, this, and that, I would like to hear from Brian a little bit uh, more solid figures of what it's going to be. And if we can maybe not cut the business spur, you know, and, and not worry about taking some of those other funds. But we need to specifically specify what we want open. Um, and I do believe, and I yield the floor after this question, Mayor, did you not reach out to the walleye um, group as far as the fish cleaning station and that restroom? I yield. Uh, the fish cleaning station, and, and I'm assuming we could throw the restroom into that mix. <laughs> okay. But I, it was the fish cleaning station for sure, and, and people are willing to volunteer, but uh, certainly that's up to city manager and uh, department heads to can we, put can together. We, by all means, we want the volunteers there yeah. are just, you know, contractual issues that we have to work out with that too. For sure. Thanks, cool. Commissioner Valentino. Mm -hmm. Can I say one quick question, Sure, Commissioner Miller. Sorry, I don't know whose turn it was next, and I apologize. Commissioner I, Twardy. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Commissioner Twardy. <clears throat> um, if you get volunteers to clean bathrooms, though, is, that, is there a liability there? That seems, I, I mean, I know we've had volunteers do things before, you know, we volunteer to clean this up or cut grass. We've had volunteers, but actually cleaning, Cleaning bathrooms, is there some type of a liability to us there? I mean, that just, I mean, it's a gross job. I mean, probably nowadays there is, but we would just have them sign off on a waiver. Sorry, Commissioner Twardy. Thanks for the okay. question, Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Twardy, last but not least. <laughs> Thank you. I know TW is out. I used to be a C, and I like that a lot better. But anyway, um, <laughs> I agree with both Abby and I, and I think that Joe, Jody, or I'm sorry, I should say Commissioner Baker. And I think that Commissioner Bostos Ras comments were, were very uh, perceptive. They were things that I probably hadn't thought about before. We should prioritize different areas within the community. And there is grass that out of that 120 acres that can grow longer. It shouldn't be the, the cemetery and it shouldn't be the areas in my opinion, where the tourists are more most often but there's got to be areas in that 120 acres that could be low priority so that we can move forward with this. I'm not in favor of just pulling funding from community services board or from other budgets without going to the community services board in order to maintain transparency. And I think that the, the youth groups would have maybe uh, things to say if we just automatically cut their funding. So there's got to be a way that city administration can look at it and bring some cost back to the table for us. Thank you, Commissioner Twardy. And then just a couple of comments and then we'll go to you, Commissioner Baker, okay? Uh, and, I, and I think, and maybe I'm misspeaking uh, City Manager Chapman, but I, I don't think it was a matter of uh, allocating money from a different source. I think it was a matter of staff time. We weren't able to hire any of our uh, summer seasonals. And uh, with everybody on furlough, that means just 560 hours a week of work that we lose. Uh, so I think city manager, you were suggesting that if the commission chose to open the facilities, and I think as commissioner Talentino said, we can say specific uh, facilities, if it's one bathroom here, one bathroom there, that then we would uh, also uh, like to direct you to uh, look at uh, some of the uh, time use now and and uh, give you some allowances and saying that this this grass is going to look shaggy because you're going to be focusing the workforce on these facilities rather than uh, doing some of the other things um, so uh, which is certainly uh, acceptable and that way we won't be uh, changing our budget prematurely when when uh, we don't know what uh, post covid or or recovery money that we may or may not get and what tax revenue that we'll have uh, so that and we just finished with our budget process so I, I think it as Kathy or as uh, Commissioner Twardy said that maybe we should uh, 
try to do what, with what we have. And, and uh, if we direct you to open the, the bathrooms, then you uh, as manager will make uh, the adjustments necessary to uh, get those facilities open and, and let us know where else we will be uh, lacking. So Mr. Baker, I, you have some comments or questions? Now, Brian, I'm, I'm confused. So did you not open the bathrooms because we did not have enough money to pay for the employees to do so? Well, it, it's one of the things, it's not necessarily money, is I don't have the staff. I mean, we don't have the part-timers. Um, but if we had the money, could we hire the part-timers? Well, that's what, yeah, you could do it a couple of different ways. If we had the money for the part-timers, we'd hire part-timers. But if there's no appetite for shifting funding, then if there is an appetite for allowing us to shift away from certain tasks, it's... You know, there's a formula. It's right. it's time or it's bodies. And if we don't have the bodies and we can get time by not doing other things, then we can make it happen. So I mean, it's, I, it's another version of Robin Peter to pay Paul. I understand that, but yeah. this is my issue is that in my opinion, $20,000 spread out between 20 different groups it does not make an impact. Bathrooms, at our number one asset, especially when it's essentially the only place people are going these days, I think that's pretty important. I also feel that having somebody sell advertising at the Polar is absolutely absurd, and that's $8,000. I also think that an ROI on a hood vent system for nine and a half years for $35,000 is absurd. And we are gonna wait two weeks in the prime of summer so you guys, so we can again cut other services like cutting grass that our taxpayers pay for for that money to sit there i do not feel comfortable taking money from our taxpayers anymore as a commissioner period until our bathrooms are open so i don't know if i can refuse my check but i think it's a service that we have to do and i think it should be done without having to take other services away when there is money there that is not needed we're talking about a need do we need this or do we need this we need bathrooms in sault ste marie for our public parks and if we cannot i i i I don't want to take any more money from the taxpayers if we can't do that. And I don't think it should come from sacrificing other services when there's money there that we as a commission can really sit down and look at the needs, the absolute and true needs of our community right now in the situation that we're in. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner Baker. Uh, any other questions or comments? Commissioner Miller, did you have your, no? Uh, I had a couple other questions, Your Honor, but after that impassioned plea, I don't think I have anything else to say. Okay, so is anybody uh, in favor of making a motion to direct the uh, city manager to research? Uh, I'll, I'll make try to get the bathrooms open and uh, and redirect some of the resources or are we going to call this a dead issue? Mr. Miller, sorry. I'd like to make that motion, Your Honor. <clears throat> Move to have the city manager, city administration look into getting our bathrooms open as soon as they can and finding where they can find the time and the resources to do that. If not necessary, the way it's been explained to me, it's not exactly just money, it's time and resources. If the city manager and the city administration can find that and get a way to get that open as soon as possible, I'd like to make that motion. Thank you, Commissioner Miller. Is there support for that motion? Support. It's been moved and supported. Any other questions or comments before we go to a roll call? Just really quick, Mr. Mayor, Robin, yes. you got the verbatim, right? Whoops, she moved. Yep. Yep, I just said motion direct the city manager to research the opening of the parks and recreation bathroom facilities. I, is that your motion, Mr. Miller? That's pretty much it in a nutshell. I think I embellished a little bit while I was saying it. Sorry, that sounds good to me. Does anyone think something should be added to it? 
Commissioner Talentino. Thank you, Your Honor. I just think we need to target specific areas. Example, you know, we've got a boat launch up in the upper river. There's no bathroom up there. There's no fish cleaning station. Well, if we need to keep this bathroom and this fish cleaning station down here across from Monty Osborne closed up, so be it. I do think we need a washroom open down on Rotary. I do need to think we need to look at the ball fields in Sherman Park. Anything above those three, actually, for myself personally, I don't really think we need to be concerned about at this point. Um, Rotary is very important. We've got our kayakers down there. Great big thing for them. Sherman Park is important. And of course, as Commissioner Baker has stated, the ball fields are very important. I think we need to focus on those three things. If you can't clean your fish right now temporarily in your basement, I'm sorry. You know, you should probably look at into that. Um, that's not open all winter long. I ice fish all winter long and I can't utilize it. So it really doesn't need to be utilized, I feel, right now in the summertime. So that being said, I think we need to look, um, city manager, at those three specific areas at this point. I think if we take care of those three areas, I think we'll be okay at this point. Thank you. Just a real Thank quick you. comment. Mr. Miller, you, the, your original motion, your original motion gave me the direction to open the facilities as soon as possible and then blah, 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 what Robin said. Robin, would you read me back the language really quick? I have to direct the city manager to research the opening of the park and recreation bathroom facility. Not, not directing you to open them, but research the feasibility to open them. Commissioner, and, uh, oh, correct me if I'm wrong. Commissioner Mr. Miller, Mr. And Go ahead. in uh, the spirit of time, did you want to have them research and facilitate the opening so that uh, we wouldn't have to wait for our next meeting if he has a plan in place? I can, I can redo the whole motion, Your Honor, if you'd like me to. I'm sorry. That's totally up to you. I'd like to do that then. Just, here's, just real quick, here's what I wrote down. Your, your emotion, your motion was to direct the city manager to open the facilities as soon as possible while researching other ways to, I can't remember if it was less in capacity in other areas or find the time or- Shift you know, the burden. There was, there was a motion that I could act as soon as possible with the understanding that there'll be some there'll be some other areas that we may not be 100% on. So, so my, motion, my, my motion basically is asking you to open the, open the facilities and find the time and resources later. Is that what you're telling me? There it is. Or is that what I'm telling you? Technically, I mean, that's that what, what I'm asking. Me? Is that what I'm asking of you? That's what you originally asked of me and I think I can get that done. Okay, well, I don't want my motion to be very ambiguous. I want it to be quite specific, so. Um, Your Honor, may I make a new motion? If you can uh, tweak your existing motion. Tweak my existing motion, okay. Right. So I, I, I would like to move that the city manager get the, get the uh, uh, restrooms open as soon as possible. Research, find the, the resources and the time to get it taken care of, but it has to be afterwards. I guess it has to be afterwards. And there was support on the original motion. And who was that from uh, Commissioner Bospis Rath? Correct. Do you, can, do you still support it? I support it. Okay. Uh, any, it's been moved and supported. Are there any questions or comments from the commissioners before we go to a roll call vote? Commissioner Miller. I have a comment. I have a question about my own motion. I'd like to ask yes. Commissioner, I'd like to ask Commissioner Baker if this takes care of what she was trying to accomplish this evening. It, it was on. It was on the agenda because of you and her. So I'd like to ask Commissioner Baker: Does does this leave leave you? Yes and no. It it helps out that the bathrooms are open and they'll be able to use them. But it's frustrating that other tax paying resources are going to get cut in order to do so when there's money sitting there. But thank you for opening them, Commissioner Bospis Rath. Something. Um, I just would like to say that Commissioner Talentino, I like his idea where we're not saying open all of them, but I like your idea of the Rotary Sherwood Park and the baseball um, softball area. 
And I think that if we focus on those main areas, high traffic, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. I'm sure that's something that city manager will take into consideration when he looks at the facilities. I don't, the motion was uh, not specific to an individual one, but. Uh, and I do, your honor. Makes, yes. Well, while I do agree with Commissioner Talentino, I do not want to tweak my motion again. Sure, we'd appreciate that. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Okay, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Baker. Yep. Commissioner Bospis Rath. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Talentino. Yes. Commissioner Twardy. Yes. Mayor Gary. Yes. Unanimous uh, support, so thank you very much. We will have some uh, restroom facilities open. Uh, under communications number two from Commissioner Twardy, discussion on city fireworks ordinance. I think we'll go directly to uh, Commissioner Twardy. Thank you. I just thank wanted you. to have a discussion tonight. It's It seems to be that the firework um, cannons seem to be uh, a whole lot worse this year more than other years in the past. I think we're going on in my neighborhood close to six or seven weeks and I'm not a party pooper and I certainly believe in the Beastie Boys right to fight for your right to party um, but I also think that we need to um, pay attention and be really vigilant about the amount of veterans that we have in our community and the amount of PTSD that they do have and what is right, what level of fireworks. So when my neighbor has a three foot PVC launcher and he launches fireworks out of, off of his front porch and they go clear into the parking lot across the street from me, I would like to know from Chief Riley, like what is considered okay? And is, does it have to be consistent every night? I know that they were even going off last night until close to two o'clock in the morning all around the community. So I think it's really becoming excessive. Um, I know a lot of people's pets suffer and I don't like to see any sort of animal suffer, but I believe that the humans need to be taken into consideration. And you know, we're all hearing it, at least I'm hearing it every single night in my community. I'm not sure about the rest of the commissioners, but I, I wanted to be able to talk about this as a group and then see what we can do, if there's any way we can tweak it. Maybe we can hear from the chief as to what is an appropriate call that can go into the police department as a complaint. Uh, thanks, Commissioner. And as part of our uh, packet, we have uh, the ordinance, the Michigan Firework Safety Act, and then also our local uh, ordinance that we tweaked. So I'd turn it over to City Manager Chapman for any uh, information or discussion on this item. So if the commissioners recall, since most of you were on the commission a few years ago, the state legislator put in a new piece of state legislation that uh, basically takes local control of fireworks away from local municipalities and says that anyone can shoot most size fireworks um, the day before the day of and the day after between certain hours of most federally recognized holidays. So George Washington Day, Martin Luther King Day, obscure Thanksgiving fireworks, all sorts of things. Um, and that, as you are aware, that trumps us. So there's not a lot we can do. Um, we do take any and all complaints that come in. There is a prioritization that comes in if we're on a more um, life-threatening call. Obviously, we will defer that call until the time being. But um, I did ask Chief Riley to kind of show me the numbers. And, you know, between the period of June 12th and July 1st, we actually only received 11 fireworks complaints. Um, four of them we weren't able to locate because they probably finished before we were able to get there. Uh, and we issued seven warnings and none of them were repeat offenders. Over the weekend, um, it was kind of tame in comparison to uh, the summers of the past too. So we're actually seeing a little bit decrease, but that's the number of complaints. There still could be an increase in the actual use of the fireworks, but realistically our ordinance mirrors the state law and 
there's nothing that we can do to deviate from that state law. So it's as long as the fireworks are of proper size and caliber, which are significantly larger than what they used to be, and they're doing it in a safe manner, it doesn't matter the density of the neighborhood, it doesn't matter how many pets are around or who's around, those people by state law are able to shoot those fireworks off. And I know from a city management standpoint, it gets incredibly frustrating because um, that new law went into effect, I think three years ago in the last two summers, the city managers, we petitioned the state legislator to overturn that law just because of the number of complaints that the first two summers we uh, we took in at city halls. Um, so, you know, we can get you more information from Chief Riley, but a lot of it is dictated at the state level and state trumps local control and they always have and they always will. That's kind of the frustrating part that is the state legislator. So. But you're, you're only talking about the day before and the day after um, a, any federal holiday, not every day. Because in my neighborhood, it's been every single day for the last seven weeks. And, and I don't you, think it's been a federal if, holiday. Yeah. And if you make the, if the call does come in for the 911, we will respond and we will warn. And if they do it again, we will start citing. Um, this, the, the tickets are actually pretty, they're pretty hefty. Um, but, you know, if we don't get the calls in from residents such as yourself in these neighborhoods, we don't necessarily um, know until after the fact that they're going off. So, I mean, if, if it is a reoccurring thing, then by all means, I would make a call in to 911 and, you know, let the police department know about it. We'll be more than happy to take care of it. But, yeah, and that's, yeah. Okay, is there any way that we can, because I think a lot of times the reason that I don't call is I don't wanna be that neighbor. And then I also don't wanna overburden the police department. I know that they're busy, but is there any sort of communication we can put out to the community that says, you know, if you're maybe on Facebook, on social media, just something that says if, if this is constantly happening in your neighborhood, feel free to call into city hall or call 911, I guess which seems extreme, but um, it just, it just keeps going on and on and on. <laughs> yeah. And we can, there's probably a messaging that we can put, you know, we can tie it to the original city ordinance that says, Hey, you know, you're only permissed. Uh, it's only permissible to shoot fireworks, the third, fourth and fifth. And, you know, you can't do it anymore for the time being until Labor Day and, you know, neighborhood beware i guess we can we can probably piece something together relatively quickly to do that okay i would appreciate that thank you thanks commissioner it's a good point uh does anybody else uh commissioner miller has his finger up over there thank you your honor um i want to expand on it just a little bit more though is chief riley with us tonight is he on zoom with us or not no, no. sir okay um what what i've seen different this year about fireworks though in the last couple of weeks, late at night, and sometimes well past midnight, one o'clock, I've heard the explosions, but not seen any fireworks. Now, I'm not on Facebook. I don't contact anyone on Facebook, but I heard there was a rumor that there was a group of folks, a group of people who were purposely detonating. I don't know what, I don't know what it was. They were, I mean, they were detonating something very, very loud with the hopes of attracting the police department maybe some type of a small militant group, or uh, you know, I, I don't want to make this sound bigger than it is, but a group of people who are trying to kind of uh, poke the bear as it may be. Do you know anything yeah. about that? Or have you heard anything from Police Riley? Because I, I, one night I heard the explosions go off loud up to two o'clock in the morning and I looked around, I didn't see any fireworks. I just heard explosions. So I don't know yeah, what that I, I can't speak to any kind of group that's purposely trying to poke the police department, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a group of people that are just purposely trying to make people angry. That doesn't surprise me at all. Um, but you know, to, to that point, if it's just one, by the time it goes up, even if the cops notice it, it's difficult to find those people. I mean, fireworks, 
Fireworks are a difficult thing to enforce because by the time, especially the size of jurisdiction that we have here, uh, by the time we get there, they're usually done. If they shot one or two of them, um, you know, there's also the instances that the fireworks, especially over in my area of the city, the fireworks are being off the shot or shot off of uh, Sugar Island. And that's, that's well without our jurisdiction. The same thing south of Three Mile, you know, we are impacted by uh, the fireworks going off outside our jurisdiction too. So they're tough. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay any of your concerns. No. And, I, and, I, and I completely understand what you're saying, but yeah. I know I was outside listening a couple nights ago. I mean, a couple nights before the 4th of July, I heard loud explosions really I know they were close to me. Now, I live down here in Water Street by City Hall, but I, yeah. I heard these explosions extremely close to me. I didn't see any fireworks in the sky. So I don't think it was just a, you know, uh, a happy family lighting up fireworks for the 4th of July. It seemed like something a little more devious to me. And I, and I don't know what it is. But. And they, they, they do sell commercial grade fireworks that just go boom without any kind of razzle and dazzle and all that stuff. And um, so, I mean, they, they sell specific noise makers that are cannons that just make those big booms too. And it's, it's, um, that's coming from a person who sold fireworks for three years in a tent. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that go boom and people love them. So. I also sold them. <laughs> Thanks, Commissioner Miller. Anything else? No, thank you, Your Honor. Commissioner Talentino. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to say one thing to our constituents out there, and I'm hoping the newspaper's here tonight. Please just respect your neighbor. That's all it is. Just respect your neighbor. You know, if it's two o'clock in the morning, there's really no need to be firing off fireworks. You know, it's, it's common sense. Just use your head when it comes to this stuff. Respect your neighbor and everything will be good to go. That's it. Thanks, Commissioner Talentino. Any others? Those were uh, great comments. The, uh, the law as written by the state is, uh, as the city manager said, is terrible. And it took all the authority from our local government away. Uh, it does allow people to light fireworks uh, this specific holiday from June 29th through the July 4th, and they can do them almost up till midnight, 1145. So I think the educational piece is very important. And if we can let our uh, residents know that uh, it's not okay to be lighting these after 1145 during the holidays. And uh, I think as Commissioner Talentino said, please be respectful of your neighbors. Um, this is a, a small community and, and we can hear those all over. So uh, anybody else have any comments or questions? Uh, Commissioner Miller. And also realize that like what Commissioner Talentino said, Please respect your neighbors, but neighbors know that 4th of July, kids are gonna light up fireworks. I mean, you're gonna hear some fireworks. So, I mean, hopefully people are being respectful about it, but that's what you do at the 4th of July, you light up fireworks. Yeah, the law, the law gives you seven days to do it, which is a little bit lengthy. <laughs> so. yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, no action necessary on that. Appreciate the uh, discussion. Item G is business items, uh, city manager. Let's talk LED lights. Sorry, 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 just give me a second. We'll delay for a little bit. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first up for commission consideration is the award of a bid to Ogney Group of Wooddale, Illinois for LED upgrades to the parking garage. Um, this is a project that's been on the books for a while now. Um, we hired UP engineers and architects to assist us with the bidding project or the bidding process. Um, we received three bids. Um, there was some suggestions about using some different type of um, uh, lighting fixtures. And so we actually went through it a couple of different times, but we've thoroughly vetted the low bid. Um, so staff would look for a motion to approve a contract with Ogney Group of Wooddale, Illinois in the amount of $55,067 for the parking garage, light, parking garage lighting upgrade project. So the motion as presented, um, this project should see a um, cost savings in the electric bill on that facility too. So this is a good project and we're really looking forward to getting this wrapped up. All right, thank you, city manager. We'll go through the roll call for any questions. Uh, Commissioner Bospis Rath, any questions or comments for city manager? 
microphone. Oh, Ms. no, Bosch. thanks. I'm good. Okay, okay thanks. Uh, Commissioner Miller, any questions or comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I didn't read this whole thing yet, and I apologize for that. What What were the other two bids, Mr. Chapman? Um, hold on a second. The other two bids. Let me just load it up here. I should have read it. I should have been prepared, and I apologize. I'm, I didn't. It's okay. Um, I just got to find the. Too busy lighting your fireworks. Yes, I was. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> there was, um, there was three bids in total. Uh, one was from the recommended low bidder. One was from J Rank Electric Incorporated. Um, their bid was 84,000. And there was another bid of, let me just scroll down to it. Uh, so that one was 84,000. There's usually a real short, easy sheet, but I can't seem to find it. Um, That's okay. I, I, I know Jay. Oh, I got it. Nope, I don't have it. And then the other, this one is the total of 55,000. Um, the, the, the two companies, there were two companies, they were local companies, but they were significantly higher with the out of town company. We'll be able to do everything that we need to do. We'll be able to do the entire parking structure for what we have budgeted. Um, the other two, uh, one was at 84,000. The other one was a lot higher. We would have to select certain levels to do within the floor within that structure. No, I understand. I'm always in favor of giving local companies. Uh, I mean, I know how the bidding, bidding process works, or whatever. But the difference between fifty-five thousand and eighty-four thousand—that's uh, that's incredibly large. Thank yeah. you, Chapman. Uh, All right. Thank you, Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Talentino, any questions or comments? I'm good, Your Honor. Thank you, Commissioner Twardy. Any questions or comments on this item? No, thank you. Commissioner Baker, any questions or comments on this item? No, thanks. All right, uh, Commissioner Baker, would you like to make the motion? Make a motion to approve the contract with Odd Main Group of Wooddale, Illinois, in the amount of $55,067 for the parking garage lighting upgrade project with additional funding to come from the Michigan Energy Optimization Program via Cloverland Actuary Cooperative. Support. Support. Thank you. It has been moved and supported. Any questions or comments from the commissioners before we have a roll call vote? Uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Bospis Rath? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Montino? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Gary? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, item G, business items, number two, city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This next item for commission consideration um, establishes a budget for the $50,000 match on main COVID-19 response program. The DDA applied and has gone through the process and was awarded the $50,000 this monies will be dispersed out to uh, downtown businesses to help them survive the COVID pandemic and the loss of revenues. Um, the staff would look for a motion to establish the budget on behalf of the DDA to receive the 50,000 from the match on main COVID-19 response program. Okay, we'll run through the roll call, see if we have any questions or comments. Commissioner Talentino? Nope, I'm all set, Your Honor, thank you. Commissioner Twardy. Yeah, just a few comments. I can tell okay. you, um, being a business owner, uh, just like several of us who are on this commission, and, and one of my businesses being impacted uh, greatly due to this, uh, due to the COVID not being able to open this two thousand dollar grant, will pay, will cover for the rent where I wasn't able to be open, um, selling goods and making money. So I'm. 
I'm appreciative of the DDA for applying for this and I'm excited that the business owners were able to recover just a small amount. Good, com good uh, comments, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Baker, any questions or comments? Just another great job by uh, Nepper, bringing in more money for the downtown, so kudos to him. Thanks, Commissioner Baker. Uh, Commissioner Bospas Rath, any questions or comments? Um, no, Your Honor, just great job, DDA, for getting this. I think, like Commissioner Forty said, our small businesses really need some help, so great. Good comments. Commissioner Miller, questions or comments? Just good job for the DDA for for uh, getting this money. Like Commissioner Twardy said, the two thousand dollars each of these uh, in to these little small businesses is going to help. It's not going to it's not going to completely get them back where they should have been, but at least they're getting something, and I'm happy to see that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Talentino. You're unlocked. Would you like to make the motion? Sure, Your Honor. A motion to establish a budget on behalf of the DDA authorizing to receive $50,000 from the March on Maine COVID-19 response program grant. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any questions or comments before we have a roll call vote? Well, I guess. Whoop, Commissioner Twardy. Although I might have a legal question. If my, if my business was uh, one of the receivers of this grant, should I be voting on this item? So you're not voting on who is being awarded, so you don't necessarily have to, but just to round out and be safe, just abstain. Okay. All right, any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Talentino? Yes. Mayor Gary? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bospis Rath? Yes. Motion is passed. Thank you very much. Great job to the DDA. Uh, H, City Manager Announcements and Updates. Com uh, City Manager Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first and most importantly, right now, uh, I'd like to introduce everyone to Kirk Twos. Kirk is on our meeting with us. If you want to just give a quick little wave there, Kirk, so everybody knows that who you are and you're not just a general member of the public just watching in on here right now. Um, so Kirk has taken over the water, water treatment plant, water distribution and sewer collection system. Um, first and foremost, with Kirk on staff, we are now complying with EGLE um, in terms of not having the proper management certification uh, so Kirk covers us there. He comes from Midland and the consulting world. So he's got a ton of great experience for us. He's doing a great job of getting the plant back up to snuff. Um, you know, he's, he's been a savior for us the last three weeks. So he's doing fantastic. Just like David Boyle, he's doing a good job on here too. Um, I'll have both these guys in front of you as soon as we get into a, a live meeting eventually here. Um, and I'll just kind of jump around and go to that next one. So uh, do, the COVID update. So we don't know necessarily what the numbers are going to do over the next week. We thought we were in the clear um, over the last, I think the, the press release that came out today is we're at 12. Um, so who knows when this will clear and who knows when we'll be able to have a, an effective in-person meeting. So um we're going to move full steam, even though we're doing a lot of um, online stuff. There's just things that can't wait anymore. Um, ordinances that need to be presented. We got to kind of finalize what we're doing with the city attorney role. And we were all kind of waiting for this to end regarding COVID, but it doesn't appear it's going to end anytime soon. So um, there's going to be certain things on our agenda that's um, been kind of hold off for the time being, but we don't have time anymore. So we're just going to start bringing this stuff forward to you. We're going to run like normal meetings. Um, then about, like I said, that's the ordinances, that's the city attorney positions, all sorts of different stuff. So that will be coming down the pipeline, um, going back up. So with Kirk and David Boyle, our new city engineer, kind of on the roll, um, we've been working with Eagle on a few different things. And 
our focus has been wastewater treatment plant and the sewer system. Um, but now it's involved the water treatment plant and the water distribution system. And there's a lot of policy decisions that will have to be made by the commission um, in short order here. And there will have to be some significant uh, dollar investment made into our facilities and some of our systems that um, play into them. So uh, in the next couple of days, I'm gonna have Sue or myself reach out to each of you. And what I'm kind of hoping to do is schedule a utilities tour with the commission. Um, I know I'm sure all of you went through it when you were first a commissioner and you were onboarded, but you need a refresher on what's happening at some of these plants. Um, this is gonna be, they're, they're gonna be big discussions. There's gonna be some big programs coming down um, and you need to just kind of have a refresher on how these systems work. And we can specifically point out, see that thing right there, that's a major problem. And that's going to cost a significant amount of money. And Kirk is kind of smiling right now because he came into my office about a week ago, kind of doing the same thing. So, so a lot of policy changes. Um, some of it's coming from staff. A lot of it is coming from Eagle. So these are things that we'll have to do. But in order for you to make a good decision, you need to be informed on what's happening at these facilities. So we're going to be reaching out and scheduling a facility, kind of a whole system. We'll take you to the start of the water to when it goes back in the river. So from the water distribute, from water treatment to the wastewater. Jody just went through it a couple months ago and she loved it. So we're going to get you guys back into those facilities. Um, just rounding out the other two updates here. Uh, we've given you the revenue and expense report. We're going to start providing a little bit more detailed financial records, um, just kind of in light of some of the issues that we've had over the last couple of months. Um, we want to keep that kind of fresh on your mind. Um, the other one is an update from the assessing office. And while there's a lot of good information in here, just a couple of things that, you know, there was an email that got sent out to everyone with some updates. And just to point out that there are three, uh, there's four now, uh, petitions to go to tax tribunal regarding properties. Um, on here is uh, Bob Payless, uh, Goodwill Mini Mall, and uh, the Super 8 Hotel. And we just received the paperwork for the property over by Walmart. So we are continuing to be challenged under the dark store theory. And with the smaller ones, we'll try to handle them internally the best we can without spending a whole lot of money but the bigger ones, such as the Walmart that we received the paperwork on, will be most likely seeking out a, a retainer for the case with Jack, who handled the Myers case, and be presenting that to you. And just as we discussed when we wrapped up the Myers case, we're going to treat this as a project. Um, we'll retain an expert. We'll have them kind of do a cost analysis and what the chances of winning are and present that to the commission so you all can make an informed decision on whether or not we want to draw a line in the sand or work with our local businesses to see if we can't come up with an applicable um, resolution. So, so just a few things going on. We just want to make you aware of and keep you aware of um, as we move forward. But other than that, I do not believe I have anything else. Not local, small business. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Twardy. Sure, just a couple of comments. Um, number one, um, going back to the facilities tour, I, I think that's a great idea. Some of us have uh, been here for a while and it's it's been a while since I've gone through there, but a suggestion, I wonder if maybe we should invite maybe the newspaper to come with us. I've even heard comments as um, of two weeks ago where people, some people believe that we don't clean our wastewater we, before we put it back into the river. I know we do. I've been to the facility. I see what we do, the processes that we go through. But uh, we might want to invite the newspaper to come along with us and maybe do some documentation. Um, number two, I, I think that if these lawsuits are starting to really come out of the woodwork, I think that this is a perfect, perfect opportunity during lame duck session to maybe get something going down in the state legislature. I think 
maybe we need to reach out to our state legislatures, like like state legislators right now and see if there's some action that we can get at least moving on this, tell them what's happening in our community and maybe the fiscal impacts that really the dollar amounts that we're looking at losing on an annual basis from these um, large box stores. And yeah, for sure, shop small because the small ones pay their taxes. Uh, thanks, Commissioner Twardy. Uh, Commissioner Baker, any questions or comments for city manager on his item? No, thank you. All right. Uh, Commissioner Bospis Rath, any questions or comments? Um, nope, I'm good. Commissioner Miller, any questions or comments on the items? Just one quick comment, Your Honor. Like uh, <clears throat> Commissioner Twardy said, some of you guys have been here a lot longer. It's just been about two years since I did my tour of when we take the water in and when the water goes back out, it's very, very interesting. It's very, some parts of it are very complex. It's very expensive. I think some of our equipment might be getting a little old. So anybody that can take that tour or perhaps there could be a virtual tour of it that the public could look so they could, and anyone who thinks that we just dump our waste back in without cleaning it is that's just ridiculous. But uh, the, the, going through that whole process two years ago, really opened my eyes to a lot of things and it, it's a it's a good tour to take thank you thank you commissioner talentino any questions or comments all set mayor thank you all right thank you and uh kirk welcome to the city of sault ste marie we appreciate you being here and uh, we look forward to having a an in-person tour one day in the future thanks city manager anything else no no, I mean, right. I apologize. Well, sure. Moving on to item I, which is matters presented by the public. Uh, would anybody in the audience like to uh, bring anything before the city commission? You can have up to uh, the three minutes, Robin, or five. Whatever it may be, you can have. Uh... <laughs> and you'll need to uh, unmute your own microphone, please, if you have any. Uh, discussion you would like to bring in front of the uh, commission. So, and Linda would like to, if you would unmute and also state your name for the record, please, Linda. Uh, thank you, Don. Uh, Linda Beauvais from uh, Malcolm Park Pride. I want to thank Abby and the commissioners for uh, the, um, I'd just like to offer, um, there are a few other people from Malcolm Park on this call and I would just like to offer one suggestion that might help a little bit. One of the big issues at the ballpark is um, the locking and unlocking of the bathrooms and we, we have had to hire park security to do that. I'm sure that's not in the budget this year, not knowing for sure what's in the budget, but I'm guessing it's not. So as far as the ballparks go, I'd like to offer us as a Malcolm Park Pride, we can divide up the opening and closing of the bathrooms and we can check them so we can give you an idea of when they need to be clean. I'm not so, maybe but there's a protocol that they have to, I realize my internet's not real good. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I, I think there's um, not necessarily a, a need to clean every bathroom every day, but we can certainly alert uh, Dan Wires or the or um, John and let them know when the bathrooms are in need. But anyway, our committee can at least open and close them. Thanks, Linda, that's uh, excellent. Somebody having to stop up there. Oops. We missed part of your last comments, but uh, we thank you very much for everything Malcolm Park Pride and, and you do for the uh, ball fields. And I think that's an excellent suggestion. And uh, I would suggest you connect with uh, city manager Chapman if you could tomorrow. And, uh, or maybe he will reach out to you, but uh, to work out kind of the logistics of how that will work. So thank you very much for uh, that suggestion. I think that's great. And uh, thanks for stepping up. Uh, Anybody else from the public uh, have any uh, comments or questions that they wanted to bring in front of the commission? If you uh, just need to unmute 
I see a few guests there, but uh, pretty quiet. Okay, so we will move on to item J, which is matters that are presented by the city commission. So uh, commissioners, uh, Commissioner Baker. Um, just a couple questions for the city manager. As far as the furlough days, because I got a couple calls from um, some downtown local businesses over the weekend for Friday and Saturday um, regarding trash pickup. Why was Friday chosen for the furlough day for employees? It was an easy day. It was an easy day that we could all mostly get off. Because, I mean, in my opinion, and with the traffic with downtown, Friday's kind of the busiest, the start of the busiest day. And I don't know if maybe looking at at least getting, figuring out how to get trash picked up on Friday downtown so it's not overflowing on Portage. Um, somehow working that out, um, if possible. We can, we'll, we'll take a look at it. And I, 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 I know, you're broke. I get it and people are furloughed, but we cannot have, I mean, between trash and no public bathrooms, it's like, I just have no words. So if there's anything that can be done about that, that would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Baker. Uh, any other items? Commissioner Baker, are you done? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Miller has his hand up. Well, I understand that bathrooms are being closed and garbage pickup, those are all, I mean, things are taking a hit. We don't have any money. But I guess if I was a city employee and I had to go through the furlough days, at least I'd want to have my furlough day on Friday. I had to have a three-day weekend. I'm losing that much money. At least I can say, well, I got a three-day weekend out of it. So I know. There's, top, there's top, Monday. Top. Okay. Hold on. There's I, Monday. I know, Be Commissioner. Furlough Man. Monday. Commissioner Baker, it's tough decisions. I understand everything's taking a hit and it's it's the whole summer's been a mess. I understand. But at least I would if I was a city employee and I had to lose two days out of my check every week, at least every two weeks, I would say, well, at least I got a three-day weekend out of it. Any other comments, Commissioner Miller? No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Talentino. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, one quick question. Actually, I believe this is for uh, Dan Wires. I'm just kind of curious right now why these um, kayak boat ramps are not in the water. Um, is there an issue why they're not in the water? Or is it is it a time issue? What have you? You know, there's this is this seriously is an outdoor thing. Uh, I think both of those should be in the water. You know, we're encouraging social distancing and what have you. And I think that's a really good sport uh, for people to take advantage of in the outdoors. So I guess I'm curious of why those aren't in yet. Let's go to that city one. manager Chapman, and if he wants to refer to uh, Mr. Wires, he will. Okay. And it's it's the same it's the same thing. It was just a low priority. Um, we plan on putting them in at a certain point, but again, when you're short staffed and we're running around trying to maintain everything else, we'll find the time and the capacity to do it. And like I said with the prison crew back now and be able to help out on a lot of these smaller things, we'll have some more time to quick get away to be able to put those, the, both those, um, uh, the, the docks or the launches in. But, you know, June was a, cause we're in July now, June was a tough month. It rained quite a bit. The grass was constantly growing. I mowed my own lawn three times just to maintain it. So, I mean, June was tough. We had people, um, we had a couple of people calling sick. We got vacations, and I believe we we may have lost an employee too. So I mean, um, he's not dead. That's that sounds weird, but I mean, it's it's just a function of staffing at this point, and we will get there. And I know it's it's we've taken a few phone calls from um, some stakeholders regarding those launches, and. They didn't like to hear that I considered it a lower priority, but we will get there when we can. It's it's coming up. We've got some more people, some more hands now, so we'll be able to make those things happen. But you know, there's there's still other projects that we have to do. Um, the blue building on the Sea Free site, that's a Parks and Rec building. We have to move all that stuff, get that to somewhere else. 
So I mean, they're, you know, it's it's one part staffing, it's one part time, and it's another part we just made a lot of commitments, and we have to get certain things done, and uh, you know, so it's it's not it's not wires, it's not director wires. It is my call. I'm the one prioritizing that work, and we'll get them in as soon as we can. Well, I'm not here to play by anybody. I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus. I'm just curious on, on why they're not in. That's all. Yep. Yep. Nope. Thank you, Commissioner Talentino. Any other items? Nope. I yield. Okay. Any other commissioners? Anything at all? Certainly a lot of good discussion tonight, and uh, I appreciate uh, hearing every uh, commissioner's perspectives. And uh, this has been a, uh, a tough spring for sure, and uh, difficult when we are over 500 hours per week shorter, and uh, that does not include the uh, temporary seasonals that we usually have. And as city manager mentioned, the, uh, the uh, work crews from the Chippewa County Jail. So. Uh, I think he's got his marching orders and he sees where uh, our priorities are and uh, and knows that uh, we would like them to get the uh, some of the public facilities open. So I, I think that's great and uh, and I appreciate that. And but I also appreciate the city manager and uh, all of the administration and the staff for the very difficult time they've been going through and uh, and uh, picking up the pieces. And uh, we lost. Uh, very many uh, people to retirements, especially at uh, higher levels. So uh, I think everybody's feeling their way around. So great job, uh, I think from the city commission entirely to the city administration and all the city staff, I see them, I saw them downtown, uh, as city manager said, watering flowers, I saw them cleaning sidewalks and I've seen them trying to patch potholes, which is an endless job. We could have every person in DPW on that every day and we still wouldn't patch every hole. So. Great job, and uh, we look forward to seeing some of the facilities moving, and hopefully we can get some uh, volunteers like uh, Linda and, and the Sam Ray's Wally Club and some of the others. So, uh, very good. Uh, any other comments or questions from the commission? Uh, Commissioner Tordy, do you want to make a motion? Sure. Move to it. Support. It's been moved and supported. All in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a Thank good you. day, everybody. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.